Hey everyone, welcome to the Client Build 24 Q&A Answers. Let's get straight into it. There seems to have been a big push recently on my channel, the comments everywhere, you know, Facebook, social media, people saying that I should talk less or not talk at all and just do, you know, time lapses or B-roll with music, basically. And, you know, every time I bring this up at all, Everyone just says more info, longer videos, you know, everything that I did when I first started. And that's why all of these people became subscribers in the first place, you know, for the information. That's what we're doing here. We're sharing information. And I think it's something that's really lacking for water cooling even now, but it was certainly lacking back when I started. And so I certainly don't plan on stopping. It's just every now and again, you know, when there's been a big push, and I guess it's probably just a loud minority, you know, a few trolls, but it, it seems kind of a, like a lot. And so I, I start to get the idea that there's a, you know, a big group of people who want to see something different. You know, I'm always going to keep changing and advancing and, you know, developing things, but I'm not going to be influenced. I'm going to, you know, do it in the way that I want to, the, right, the way that I see as being the right way. And information sharing will always be the basis of, well, not just the channel, but everything Singularity Computers does. Um, I would happily do all of this for free, you know, if I had some other way of living. Okay, so first question, 10K and stock Corsair fans in the front. It's funny, but there's actually quite a long answer to this. Basically, ever since I've started doing build logs, I used to just, you know, if a customer didn't go for the, the most extreme of something or the, the, you know, the component that they really wanted, but they had to step back a bit because of budget, I'd just say, all right, you know, I'm going to put it in there anyway. And anyone who's built extreme systems knows that you can set a budget and it will blow out every time. So when you're trying to do that for a living and the budget blows out, well, you lose and you work for a month for nothing. And, you know, you can't do that for very long, obviously, because you'll go broke. And it's not hard to do, you know, with systems like this. And I've started to become a lot more strict about the budget and about trying to get paid for everything that I do. I mean, I look back at the past week and there's probably two days that, I, you know, I still didn't get paid for, even though I've become very, very strict. And that's just because I see something that is just so good that I just have to do, you know, even though the customer is not really willing to or can't pay for it. So, yeah, that's why the fans are stock in the front. I mean, it's just a couple of fans, you know, $40, $30 or something. But still, you do that a few times in a build and the small margin that I make is gone very quickly. So it's something that you, you know, might ask the customer about. Do they want to spend a little extra? How did you come up with this, your Singularity Computers motif? Also, what does the design mean to you? This is a really interesting one. When I was really sick, I was bedridden for about a year at one point. And I actually had my guts hanging out. I would see my guts every day. I'm not kidding, my small bowel. And, you know, I was, I was pretty bad. I wasn't able to do much. I was still building systems. I remember one day I had to lift the system up onto the bed and I couldn't do it. And I had this real thing about, you know, still being capable because I really wasn't, you know, I was very, very weak. And so I wanted to do it on my own. And yeah, my mum was standing behind me and she went to help me and I, I, I said, don't you dare, you know, I was really angry. And next thing I passed out and, and almost dropped it on the floor and you know during this time I did look for a little bit of escapism and escapism in gaming which is great they've done studies on gaming as a pain pain relief and it works amazingly well but you have to do it all the time for it to work because it's such a strong distraction for the brain and I started looking I mean when you have a near-death experience when you basically die you really start to question your reality. And I had an experience, a near-death experience, which I'm not even gonna talk about, because 
I don't know, some people might think I'm crazy, but it happened whether it was the drugs or whatever you want to say it was based on your beliefs. You know, I don't even know what my beliefs are. I just believe wherever the evidence, you know, pushes me. But yeah, I started to question reality, what this reality is, why we're here and all of that. And I, I mean, I always have, I went to a Steiner school. You, you can look into what that is. And, you know, in my search, I, I came across the black hole, which I already knew about. You know, I was looking into astrophysics. And I really liked the idea of, a, a black hole and so that's kind of where it started you know the the thought of singularity in my mind but then I also looked into the singularity as in what Ray Kurzweil and some of the other elites talk about where technology will, will reach a certain point where it just grows exponentially I mean it kind of already has but a point where man merges with machine and we I mean there'll be steps in it but the ultimate you know goal with with it it's transhumanism at first is that we upload our consciousness into essentially a, a machine but by that time we'll probably have control over all matter and you know the the code of atoms themselves who yeah it goes a long way the whole transhumanism thing is very very interesting but yeah that's another side to and another meaning for singularity so you know, a black hole, the singularity, transhumanism, man merging with machine. But it also means the only one individual, you know, it stands out. And so I really like the idea of it because it has all these meanings. And when I started my repair business, it was a very bad idea to call it singularity computers because, you know, a repair business, you just want it to be at the top of the you know, search, so you call it like ABC computers or something to, you know, make you the most popular, more successful. It wasn't a very, you know, attractive kind of marketable name for, for a repair business. But, you know, I did quite well. I, I actually did very well in setting up my repair business in just a year, dis despite the huge challenges. But, you know, I was always thinking about the future and my goals were always far beyond the repair business and basically at that time my goals were pretty much where I'm at now which is really cool the the logo Febby actually created that logo and Febby has been with me basically since the beginning he's a very important part of this company and without him you know none of it would have happened and none of it would happen I mean it's just me and him versus the world basically you know we're a very small team and we have a big fight on our hands and you know both of us have serious illnesses you know so we face the same challenges and we have the same mindset it's why we work so well together you look at life very differently you know after you face death and he understands all of that it's like a whole different level that you, that you come to so yeah we get along really well and that's why everything is has works so well and we've come so far even just essentially with two people you know even with the huge setbacks that we've had but the logo was it kind of wasn't deliberate but one day somebody asked me are you a mason or a luciferian and i said why he said because your logo it's got three sixes in it and i looked at it and i was like yeah it does too very interesting because it's supposed to represent a black hole and it kind of subconsciously ended up with three sixes around it. The most destructive force in the universe, 666. You know, so, yeah, the guy was like some conspiracy theorist asking me if I was like Illuminati or something. But a lot of logos have three sixes in them and triangle or pyramids in them. And, you know, a lot of Saturn symbolism. I really like symbolism, actually. But, yeah, that was kind of unintentional. But... Who knows, that, that kind of connects with the singularity as well. And maybe there, there is some other reason to it. I mean, a lot of the time I let my subconscious kind of, you know, tell me what to do. A lot of people are asking me to add the names of the songs. I really have to find out what they are, where I download them from. It doesn't tell you the name of the song. It, it just tells you like the category. It's a really weird system. And the only time I find out what the names of the songs are 
is when I get a copyright strike on the song, which I shouldn't get because I've paid good money for it, for like the best license you can get, but still the copyright strikes, which is really frustrating. You know, and then I have to provide all of the, the licenses and everything, and usually that's all right, but then still they escalate it even further, even though I've paid for multiple licenses on most of that music. So it's very frustrating. What does CPU OPT mean? I still haven't looked that up. I, I've seen it. It started popping up, I guess, about a year ago, maybe six months ago. CPU optional, because it's always the CPU fan header. Oh, it's, it's like an extra CPU fan header. Oh, someone's answered it. It means CPU option. Yeah, meaning optional cooler. This port on motherboards is specifically designed with liquid cooling pumps in mind. I hope this helps. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, the reason I the reason I don't know the answer to this is because I don't have time for research anymore. So unless I kind of figure it out myself, it you know it's something that I yeah those sorts of things I used to spend so much time researching to to find out everything, but a lot of the details these days I I kind of miss. Why do you use mostly EK components and bits power fittings in most of your builds? Why don't you try other brands such as SwiftTech, AlphaCool, XSPC, etc.? That's an excellent question and it's one I've had on almost every video for a very long time now. And considering I now have my own components, well, that's kind of my answer to this question, you know. But, I mean, every system that you see me building is a customer system, so it's their choice. And there's a general consensus, but it's not so much that, it's just that they've seen other systems that I've built and that's why they've come to me. They like the systems that I've built and so they want that. And so, you know, obviously there's going to be similarities because of that, but I'm the sort of person that wants to totally change it up and tip things upside down every time. When I am able to start becoming, you know, taking more risks with my products and releasing more futuristic products, which will you know lead the market and create new trends i mean you have to take risks to do that you will see that i would just love to you know completely turn things upside down every time with everything that i build but the similarities come in because of customer requests it's also because there are very few companies that have a large enough range to fully supply a build so you know, BitsPower is the only company that has all of the fittings that I like to use. The correct extensions, the dual and single rotaries, the 16 millimeter hardline compression fittings. They have like a range of about 800 fittings or something. No other company comes anywhere near that. And no other company can provide me with the fittings that I need to create the clean loops that I want to create. The limitations that I come across with other companies, I mean, I get a quarter of the way into the loop and I'm already stuck with limitations that are going to lead to really for me the complete destruction of the aesthetics for that build and the way that I want to build it. Not just the aesthetics but the functionality. And so for me the only choice is this huge range that gives me absolute freedom with my loops. As for you know EK the water blocks well often almost every time the other companies won't have all of the water blocks I need for the build and I'm not going to mix and match water blocks. Plus, for many years I've been, I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years or so, more than half of my life. And in that time I've used every brand out there. And I've settled on certain brands because I'm building customer systems. I don't want to have any problems. If I send something overseas and it has the slightest problem, it has to come all the way back cost a fortune, sends me broke very quickly. So those machines have to be absolutely perfect, last a very long time and work very well. Have you tried the new replacement like the AlphaCool Ice Pump VPP755? It seems to be quite an improvement, less power consumption and vibrations, but keeping D5 mod tops and the mod kits compatibility. Awesome builds as usual, by the way. And yeah, our D5, components the pump top and the pump cover fits all of the d5s even the ones with connections on the back of them 
But yeah, I'm definitely going to start using other D5 pumps, particularly the Aquabus D5, considering I'm also using the Aquero a lot. But really it comes down to customer request. A lot of the time now the customers are sending me their components. X1 or Pastel, which one is better and when do you change out your coolant? I heard Pastel can go for about three years before you have to change the fluid. How long is it for X1? Keep up the great work. Yeah, they definitely do have slightly different lifespans. I like them both equally and the only reason I'll use one or the other is for aesthetics. I have a build out there, or a lot of builds out there, that have been going for, you know, five, six, seven years. And there's one that's been going for seven years. It has Mayhem's Pastel in it. No dye, just pure Pastel. And it's still running fine. No discoloration, no problems of any kind. And that's seven years. So Pastel can last a very long time. But it comes down to how you set up your loop as well. Soft tube should be avoided altogether. Pastel with soft tube is probably going to last less than X1. X1 works better with soft tube. But with a hard tube loop, Pastel is going to last longer. I would say maybe a year or two. You know, that build out there with X with, with Pastel in it, if it had, had have had X1, I'd say around the five year mark, you know, you could have started to have some problems. But yeah, with a good hard line loop with X1 or Pastel, three to five years is what I would safely say with either. You mentioned this builds overclocking capabilities are limited by the cores. Would you be able to outperform this with an 1800X? In certain applications, you know, it is possible. The 1800 is an amazing CPU and, but I've done some overclocking with it. And unless, you know, you're on LN2, which they've broken some world records and done some incredible things with that chip on LN2, you can't go past about 4.2 gigahertz. And actually the 6950X is the same, pretty much, when it, you know, when it comes to the 4.2 gigahertz limitation. It bothers me when I see two GPUs sharing the same loop. When you look at the temperatures, the one card is always 10 degrees hotter than the other, or even worse, a two GPU and a CPU sharing one water cooling loop, the one of them is 20 degrees hotter. This particular point is, it's really amazing how long this has gone on for. I started debunking this way back with Nighthawk Client Build 5, which was 2010, I think, because a lot of people, you know, really didn't like that build because, I mean, that was the first time I ever used hard tube. And as far as I know, the first time it was ever used. And because of the information that I started to ch share, hard tube then, right at that point in time, took off all of a sudden. You know, so that's the difference that a bit of information sharing can have. And it was mainly because of the flow restriction of the smaller acrylic tube that I was using, because back then there was only fittings for 12 mil and also the amount of components that were in those loops. But this point came up over and over again. And you know, that was when I really started to, to hit this hard and debunk it. In short, that's not how it works. The coolant moves too fast throughout the loop to heat up at any of the components. It does very slightly, but the temperature of the coolant throughout the entire loop varies by maybe 0.1 of a degree. You know, as it heats up by 0.1 of a degree, comes through the radiators and is cooled by 0.1 of a degree. It's very, very slight variation, and that's because the flow is just so high, mainly with the pumps these days and the way we build our loops these days. Unless you have a terrible pump and the flow is moving so slowly, you know, at a snail's pace, then it's going to heat up at each component. But, I mean, if you run your system for 60 seconds without the pump on, the, the coolant in your water block is going to heat up massively. But if it's going through like, I mean, what is it? 12, 1500 liters an hour, then absolutely not. It makes no difference at all. The only reason the top GPU is hotter is because GPU one is used more than GPU two. Nice SMA eight in the background. Glad I have one of those myself. Going to do a build with that anytime soon. I want to see the tubing in the bottom section. I have three SMA8 builds on at the moment. 
And a lot of people are asking about client build 23, when I'm going to finish it. Well, it's actually on hold for upgrades right now. And there'll be some excitement about that again pretty soon. We're doing something really cool with it. But yeah, I'll be finishing it soon. Just waiting for the upgrade components to arrive, which the customer is currently organizing. How is the GPU's OC temperature lower? That happens surprisingly quite a lot. It's probably just, I mean, margin of error is about one degree. But I mean, it is possible that usually I cold boot the system and then test. Maybe I cold booted the system and then immediately tested for one while the coolant was still, you know, cold. And maybe for the other, I left the system running for three or five minutes and it made a bit of a difference. I, you know, need to be a bit more careful with the whole cold boot thing. I either need to cold boot it or leave it idling for 30 minutes or something for both before I test. Never let someone tell you that your content isn't good enough. I've been a sub for a day now and I'm totally hooked on your videos. Commentary is great. Keep it up. It's really strange, you know, I, you see the amount of comments, the amount of activity on our videos, the amount of likes, and then, you know, I, you go to an event like PAX, I didn't go, someone in my team did, and everyone knows who we are, you know, all of the big companies know who we are, all of the other channels know who we are. It, it is kind of strange if we are that well known that we're still at the amount of subscribers that we are. And some really strange things have been going on with our channel. I'm not going to come to any conclusions here, but I have seen 5,000 subscriber blocks just deleted at a time. There was one point where we were making incredible subscriber gains, you know, up to 500 a day. And it went on for a couple of weeks. And then they went back and they deleted everything. And it actually tells you, you know, if they're closed accounts or what they are. It just, you know, it's really strange. They delete these huge blocks. And then when you look at the analytics and the graphs, it doesn't actually show up these subscribers that they've deleted. And at one point, you know, there's different areas of your channel where you can actually watch subscriber growth. And I was watching all these people joining, you know, huge amounts. And, you know, in that part, I was getting one number, which was, you know, 20,000 subscribers higher. And in another part of my channel, you know, I was getting this other low number. And I was just seeing this incredible growth. And I could tell it was organic because I could see those people commenting, you know, some of them. And I, you know, I looked into that. I checked their, their accounts. And, you know, because I've spent a lot of time looking into this because there is something really strange going on. And, you know, next thing, again, they started deleting huge blocks and all of these people disappeared again. And yeah, I've talked to them and they've said it's a bug. And I said like, you know, when are you going to fix it? Because people are just getting kicked off. They don't even know that I'm making videos and they might have subscribed and then they've just kind of forgot about it because, you know, you might come across a good new channel and you subscribe, but then if you don't get any reminders, you're not, you're just going to forget about it. And yeah, they, they just said, oh, maybe six months. And then I emailed them six months later. I said, how's the bug fix going? And no answer. Are you planning on doing a video on how you modify fan cables? Would love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm going to do that in the next cable guide. Did the client already own the AVA Media Live Gamer HD or was it new based on the fact? Yeah, it was new. So he's asked, did you know about the Live Gamer HD 2 coming out? No, this build is actually from quite a while back. I uploaded a long time after I finished the build. Did you attempt to train the CPU up higher or was 4.2 the best you could get with reasonable voltage versus time and effort spent? No, I definitely tried to get it higher. I took it 4.4, but it was just getting too hot. You know, even with the high-end water cooling system in there, it was just pushing, you know, 85 degrees. What are your opinions on running a single GPU in parallel, CPU and GPU? Absolutely, check out Client Build 22. You know, I've played around with parallel a lot. Works great as long as you have good flow. 
If you're gonna go more than two components in parallel, make sure that you back it up with an excellent pump configuration. You know, at least the D5, maybe a couple, because yeah, that flow is really needed to, because it allows for so much more flow that if the flow isn't there, it, you know, it doesn't even fill the blocks. Have you found any good unifying RGB software that can do synchronized RGB control between components rather than using different software for the case, motherboard, etc.? Do you think it would be useful or possible to build this software? I especially want something that can change the case and peripherals RGB to fit my desktop background similar to well on Linux. Um, that would be a really good idea. You know, to create some software that works with Asus Aura with, that ties into the fab work, you know, Aqua Computer, the Aquera software. You could actually work with all of those companies to, to integrate everything into one. You know, that would be a great little tool to build. And, you know, you could probably sell it. You could probably yeah, develop it and actually make a living out of it. Why 1500 watt PSU? That whole power supply argument gets so vicious. I can't believe it. Because, you know, that's what the customer asked for, but it doesn't matter if you have a more powerful power supply, it just means it's going to be more efficient in general. Would you like to try making a build with glass tubing in the future, or is it none of your interest? I'm actually working on the first one now with glass tube, and it's a lot of fun. It's more time consuming. It's definitely more difficult. But once you have a good way of cutting it and beveling the ends, putting a... a chamfer on the ends it works pretty well do you release build logs live or after the customer receives a computer half of me says i'd want to see it being built half of me says i'd want the stun factor of seeing it whole for the first time in person i no, i do most of the time do the build logs before the customer receives the system but they're always a minimum of two weeks behind what I'm actually doing. Sometimes a lot more. And yeah, occasionally I'll release the build log after the customer receives the system. Just picked up your dual reservoir mount from Performance PCs. It is a damn nice piece of hardware. I hope you will continue to develop custom PC parts. Absolutely. And thanks for your purchase. It makes a huge difference for us. You know, I... If I tell you guys something like, you know, I've mentioned a little bit about our, our struggles, I really mean it. There's a whole lot more to it that I'm not even telling you. But just a little story that may give you a picture of the way things have been. To afford my first camera, I actually ate one bowl of rice a day for an entire year. And that's how I was able to save up. So, you know, we... We really are passionate and willing to, to work with nothing, and we have worked with nothing for a very long time. So if we ever do get somewhere and receive something for what, we've, what, what we're doing, then what you're going to see, considering how, we've, how much we've been limited so far by resources, is just, you know, it's amazing. And... This year, you're definitely going to start to see what I'm capable of as long as people get behind our brand and, you know, things go well. And people are starting to get behind our brand, which is really great to see. I mean, it's really important. We wouldn't be around for very long if they didn't. I've been trying to find more information on how to polish an EK GPU backplate, but can't find anything. Is there a way to polish the nickel plated backplate to a mirror finish that would really improve I don't like phones. <laughs> the aesthetic of any build. You can't polish plating at all. It's way too thin. If you use even Brasso, like a metal cleaner on plating, you can strip it straight off. It's extremely thin. I mean, you can obviously clean it up a bit with a microfiber cloth, but it's, it's quite delicate. It's easy to scratch if there's dust on the surface. It's a little bit like acrylic, really. It's quite sensitive. The only way you would actually be able to polish those milling marks out that are in the back of all, you know, the EK backplates 
is to just sand the plating right off and polish the aluminium itself. And that would come up really nice. And I like polishing alloy, it's kind of addictive, so that would be fun. It would take you a lot of time, probably, you know, three or four hours. Will you attempt to build in the Thermal Take 900 tower? That thing is a beast, we'd love to see what you can come up with. Yeah, I had a request for that recently. I think I'll be doing a build into one of those pretty soon. I just, I have a real thing about, you know, people copying and, and I must say Thermal Take has definitely done quite a bit of that. If you have the capabilities, you know, the, the resources, the, the manufacturing capabilities, the money to go ahead and develop some, a product and release it, then why would you not do something unique? Why wouldn't you take that opportunity to offer something new to the market, something amazing, something inspiring, something exciting? It's just so frustrating, you know, to see the same things over and over again and exact copies almost. It really frustrates me. How do you decide which fittings are going to be appropriate for the loop? Well, I have a whole collection of fittings and someone's actually answered that here and said that. And I just pick and choose from my collection of fittings what I want to use. And obviously it's a collection of fittings of the fittings that I like to use in my builds. Every now and again, I'll add to it a little bit, you know, if Bits Power releases something new and exciting, but you know, it's been pretty much the same for a long time now and it just, you know, works great. It gives me so much freedom. I can do anything with my collection of fittings. Uh, that's why I love Bits Power fittings. But if I did have to, you know, and I have helped a hell of a lot of people choosing fittings for their builds. If I had to choose fittings for, for a build and I didn't have my collection, I would kind of just in my mind take an average of all of the builds that I've done and the fittings that I use the most and do it that way. But I mean, you can get halfway there by counting the amount of water cooling components you're going to have in the build. So, you know, how many radiators, water blocks, all of the components, and then you obviously double that number, an inlet, an outlet, two openings per component. So that'll give you the compression fittings or the hardline compression fittings that will get you started. And then you think, well, how small is the build? Do I have to go through the mid plate? Do I have to cross side to side into a different compartment? And you know, you have to really think about it and plan it out just a little bit. And then you come up with a number for, you know, 90 degree single rotaries and then add two or maybe four extra. How do you fight GPU sag? I know rigid tube helps, but even when I build systems with rigid tubing, there's always a, a tiny bit of sagging. Uh, yeah, I found with certain water blocks from certain manufacturers, sag can be really bad. With EK, it's always pretty good. If the water block doesn't extend right up to the rear I.O. plate and doesn't have an attachment point there, you know, because then the water block will support the entire PCB all the way up to the, the rear I.O. plate. But if it doesn't, if there's a gap there, it's the worst thing you can possibly do because you're adding all of that weight with no support and it just sags terribly. So, you know, the water blocks can really help. But if it's, I mean, if it's air cooled, open coolers are, are terrible for sag. But yeah, if it, you know, if it's water cooled ways of working with it is with hardline. And actually some of the things that I've done in the past there might be a 90 degree bend, you know, below or above the GPUs. And if you don't extend the bend all the way to 90 and there's some pressure there, you know, you can actually use that to push the GPUs into position or pull them into position, you know. So that is something, a little trick that I've done in the past. How did you configure the RAID? Two SSDs using Intel Rapid Storage technology setting in the BIOS. And when you install the OS, do you use a flash drive? Yeah, the RAID, I just use the BIOS. Like after the, the BIOS, after post, Intel Rapid Storage technology pops up 
just for a second and you hit Control i and you can enter it and configure it in the BIOS or you can do it in the software once you've installed the drivers and software for yeah Intel rapid storage technology but I actually have a video on this I'll put a link in the video description so that you can check it out it shows you know exactly that absolutely love your video my question is at this moment what is your favorite kind of builds when someone comes with a request what gets your nerd on the most and why unique you know really crazy groundbreaking stuff that is almost going to annoy about 50% of people while the other half will like it so much that it makes up for that 50% that doesn't like it basically you know so different that it's like art where some people really hate it and some people just connect with it and really love it I would go so much more out of the box than I do if I could you know you would see far more creative and unique things from me but I also do think at the same time it's important to create an aesthetic that is timeless but I do that for my customers so that they have a build that will remain quite valuable to them so that even in five years it still looks you know timeless and they can still sell it for a good price you know everything I do with my builds is is well thought out and you know for the for the benefit of the customer but if I had complete freedom with something and that wasn't my priority I would just yeah I would go really crazy and do something really unique but you're gonna see something from me this year which is exactly that geez how much does that beast even weigh yes in the 900d because it's a very heavy case uh, I think it came to over 40 kilograms in the end when a customer decides to upgrade some parts, what do you do with the old parts? Well, I either give them back to the customer or I sell them and, well, it's, you know, it's up to the customer. So they take them back or, or I sell them on behalf of the customer to recover budget for the build and then I improve the build. During the temp results, was that the temp of the coolant or the component? It was the temp of the component, but I should have included the temperatures of the coolant. That is something that I had access to obviously I had temp sensors installed and you know it would have been really interesting to have that as part of the results I you know I missed that a lot of people mention that the case is outdated the case a case is something that is very personal it's the one part of the build in in my opinion that is the most personal it is the thing that is most up to the customer over anything else so with the case, I always let the customer decide, and unless they ask me, I never really say anything about it. Whatever their decision is, that is it. I don't question it. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching, and remember that none of this would be possible without our customers and our patrons.